Gardner, now Stantec, together with Council and the Department of Planning and Environment, have recently completed the draft Lower Shoalhaven River Flood Study as part of the Lower Shoalhaven Floodplain Risk Management Study and Plan. The revised flood study provides an updated understanding of flood behaviour and potential impacts. A draft report is now on public exhibition to allow review and comment from the community. The presentation covers the project background and study objectives, model development, design event modelling, results and impacts of flooding, and next steps. Previous flood information available for the catchment, the Shoalhaven River Flood Study was undertaken in 1990 using older software and methods. Council are taking the opportunity to update the flood study using the latest industry standards, updated software and survey information, additional flood data for calibration, and expanding the model extents to improve the accuracy and currency of the flood information. Objectives of the study are to provide Council with up-to-date flood information by defining flood behaviour under existing conditions and future flood risk, investigation of the potential impacts of climate change, including sea level rise and increased rainfall, along with impacts of flooding on the community, flood planning levels, flood damages and emergency response considerations. The flood study will be used as the basis for the floodplain risk management study and plan to identify emergency response measures and other critical flood information required by the state emergency services as part of flood response action, identify potential emergency management, planning and flood mitigation solutions for the floodplain, and develop a plan for priority implementation of identified risk management measures. The Shoalhaven River has a catchment area of approximately 7,250 square kilometres and is the sixth largest coastal catchment in New South Wales. The river rises some 50 kilometres inland from Maria and follows a generally northerly direction to Talawa Dam, where it is joined by the Kangaroo River from the north. The river then flows east, passing Nara to the ocean. It is joined by the Atrema and Yalwal Creek catchments downstream of Talawa Dam and the Nara and Browns Creek, Bombardieri Creek and Broughton Creek catchments in its lower reaches. Shoalhaven River flows to the Tasman Sea along with the Crookhaven River at Crookhaven Heads and through an intermittently open and closed entrance at Shoalhaven Heads. The study area covers the lower Shoalhaven River between Grassy Gully at the western extent through to the ocean via Shoalhaven Heads and Berries Canal to Crookhaven Heads, the Crookhaven Creek and Crookhaven River floodplain, the Broughton Creek floodplain, along with the tributaries of the Shoalhaven River, Crookhaven River and Broughton Creek. The major towns that are located around the Shoalhaven River are Nowra, Bombardieri, Berry, Tarara, Greenwell Point, Kalbarra Beach, Orient Point and Shoalhaven Heads. The Lower Shoalhaven River has experienced numerous floods since records start in 1860. The largest floods recorded occurred in 1870, 1873, 1925, 1860, 1978, 1916 and 1891. In the recent past, flooding occurred in April 1988, August 1990, June 2013, August 2015, June 2016, February 2020 and August 2020, which was the largest since 1990. Minor flooding also occurred in March and May 2021 and most recently in March 2022. Council have undertaken a number of previous studies in the catchment, including the 1990 Lower Shoalhaven River Flood Study to define flood behaviour, the 2002 Tarara Village and Riverview Road Floodplain Risk Management Studies and Plans, and the 2008 Lower Shoalhaven River Floodplain Risk Management Study and Plan, which investigated flood mitigation and management options. The 2006 Shoalhaven River Entrance Management Plan, which describes procedures and responsibilities for the opening of Shoalhaven Heads to reduce flooding in the low-lying foreshore areas of the lower estuary. And a 2011 Climate Change Assessment to assess impacts on flood levels with sea level rise and increased rainfall. In addition, a Shoalhaven River flood study was completed in 2013 for the Manildra Group. Council have also completed floodplain risk management studies and plans for the Nowra and Browns Creek, Bombardieri Creek, and Broughton Creek at Berry. Consultation with the community and stakeholders is an important component in the development of a flood study. 
Consultation provides an opportunity to collect information from observed flood events and feedback and observations from the community on problem areas and on potential floodplain management measures. Community consultation to date has included Council's Get Involved website with relevant information on the study and a questionnaire in 2019 where community was asked to provide information about their flood experiences, including historical flood observations. And the community was also asked about their preferences for different types of flood mitigation options. 61 responses were recorded from the online consultation, with a subset providing flood depths for historical events. Relevant stakeholder agencies have also been corresponded with to obtain relevant flood data and information for use in the study. Further community consultation will be undertaken in future stages of the study. The flood study update builds on previous studies and available data has been reviewed to inform the study, to provide data to set up the models and to allow testing of the model's performance. Where insufficient data was available, additional data was collected, such as survey and up-to-date rainfall and water level data. The updated flood model has been developed using two models, a hydrological model and a hydraulic model. A hydrological model is used to simulate the conversion of rainfall into runoff to calculate flows within the catchment. The Lower Shoalhaven River hydrological model has been developed using XP Raft software and covers the entire Shoalhaven River and Kangaroo River catchments, which have been divided into subcatchments using terrain data and includes Talawa Dam and Dangera Dam. Catchments have been assessed for their characteristics, such as slope, land use, vegetation cover, and impervious areas such as roads and buildings to allow assignment of model parameters reflective of current catchment conditions to each subcatchment. Model parameters have been selected through a process of calibration and validation against measured flow data from historical events. A hydraulic model is used to simulate the flow of water through a catchment and associated waterways to calculate flood characteristics such as water level and velocity of flow. The Lower Shoalhaven River hydraulic model has been developed using two-flow software, which is a two-dimensional hydraulic model to represent the main Shoalhaven and Crookhaven River channels, the lower reaches of the major tributaries including Narrow Browns Creek, Bomaderry Creek and Broughton Creek, and the Crookhaven River and Broughton Creek floodplains. Model setup includes aerial laser survey data collected in 2010 in combination with ground survey and bathymetric data to develop a digital elevation model of the topography, bathymetry in the study area as shown in this slide. A layer delineating the study area into different material types to assign a hydraulic roughness, which is the measure of the surface resistance to flow. Structures such as bridges and culverts under roads levees, flood mitigation drains, and floodgates. Inflows from the hydrological model and the tidal boundary condition at the ocean. A breach development study has been undertaken to understand the Shoalhaven Head's entrance dynamics and opening dimensions achieved under various flows to allow the expected entrance condition to be represented in the two-flow hydraulic model. Due to the erodible nature of the berm, Flows will scour the entrance to an equilibrium width with dimensions and capacity to convey the relevant flow magnitude for the flood event. This may occur naturally or open manually when Council's entrance management policy is triggered. The entrance opening limits water levels in the lower estuary areas and is important to represent this in the flood model correctly. This breach development study allowed the development of a relationship between breach width and river flows. The appropriate entrance opening width for the flow rate at Narrow Bridge for each model flood event was applied to the two-flow model. With the model now set up to allow simulation of flood events, the model was then calibrated to ensure it was able to provide a good representation of historical events. Model calibration is an essential step in the flood modelling process to confirm that the model can reproduce observations and measurements from historical flood events to demonstrate the model's ability to reliably simulate expected behaviour in the study area. The August 2015 event was selected for calibration with the June 2013, June 2016 and March 1978 events selected for validation. Recorded rainfall flow and water level gauge data was used for the August 2015 event calibration, along with flood marks surveyed by Council after the event and community observations from community consultation. The calibration uses recorded timing and spatial distribution of rainfall data as inputs to the hydrology model 
and results are compared with the recorded flow pattern and magnitude at the available flow gauges. Model parameters are adjusted to achieve a better match to recorded data. The historical event flows calculated in the hydrological model are used as inputs to the hydraulic model along with tidal data from Jarvis Bay gauge at the ocean boundary. The flood model results are compared with recorded and observed flood levels. And again, model parameters are adjusted to achieve a better match to recorded data. After an iterative process of adjustment of model parameters, a good correlation with the timing, shape and peak of the recorded flows was achieved at most gauges, particularly the outflow from Talawa Dam. A good correlation with the timing, shape and peak of the recorded flood levels was achieved at all seven water level gauges within the study area. The tidal response, timing and peak are well matched. For the August 2015 calibration event, Modelled flood levels are within 100 mm of gauge flood levels at most locations, and modelled peak flood levels compare well with the surveyed flood marks and the levels and depths reported from the community, with almost all points less than 100 mm difference. For the model validation events, the calibrated model compares well with the gauge flood levels and community observations to within 300 mm. Following the calibration and validation, the study moved into the design flood estimation phase with confidence that the hydrology and hydraulic models provide a good representation of flooding in the catchment. Design events are estimated from theoretical rainfall events that are defined by a percentage annual exceedance probability, or AEP, which is the statistical probability of occurrence. That is, the probability that a flood of a given magnitude will be experienced in any one year. Design flood estimates for the study have been developed using the latest industry standard, Australian Rainfall and Runoff 2019. The design events modelled for the flood study include the 20% AEP event, 10% AEP event, 5% AEP event, 2% AEP event, 1% AEP event, 0.2% AEP event, and the probable maximum flood. Scenarios include the existing baseline scenario with current rainfall and sea level and the projected 2050 and projected 2100 sea level rise which uses the Shoalhaven City Council sea level rise policy and adopts a 230 mm sea level rise by 2050 and a 360 mm sea level rise in 2100. Flood depth results show that for more frequent events up to the 20% AEP event, flooding is largely contained within the channel banks of the Shoalhaven River and tributaries, including Bomaderry Creek. Flooding in these frequent events largely affects Broughton Creek floodplain, with Bowlong Road affected at the lower end of Broughton Creek, and the lower reach of Bomaderry Creek near Shoalhaven River also affecting Bowlong Road, the swamp area to the east of Nara, number and priory areas, including tributaries of Berry's Canal, low-lying foreshore areas around Shoalhaven Heads, Coolangatta, Comorong Island, Culborough Beach, and the tributary flows affecting properties in Berry, Barina, Bombardieri, East Nowra, and South Nowra. For the 5% AEP event, flooding is widespread throughout the Shoalhaven and Crookhaven River floodplain with depths becoming greater, commonly exceeding 2 metres, with the various tributaries becoming interconnected to form a combined floodplain. Depths within Broughton Creek floodplain are greater than 3 metres over large areas. Tararo levees are overtopped south of Pig Island and more properties around the foreshore areas become inundated, including Shoalhaven Heads, Greenwell Point, Orient Point, and Culborough Beach. The 1% AEP event has similar but greater depths and extents, particularly around the lower Crookhaven, Greenwell Point, and Culborough Beach. It is noted that for events rarer than the 2% AEP event, that flood extents do not change significantly, but the depths increase due to the relatively steep nature of the terrain surrounding the floodplain extents. Probable maximum flood event affects large areas of the Broughton Creek, Lower Shoalhaven River and Crookhaven River floodplain, as well as the tributaries and overland flow areas. Depths are greater with the backwater affecting parts of Nowra, Bombardieri and Berry, as well as more severe flooding of the foreshore areas of the lower reaches. This plot shows flood level difference for a 1% AEP event with a projected 2050 sea level rise. The blue areas indicate areas with increased flood levels. Sea level rise predominantly affects the lower reaches of the system towards the entrances, the low-lying areas around the foreshore, and within the Crookhaven River floodplain areas. 
The Shulhaven City Council projected 2050 sea level rise of 230 mm results in typically less than 150 mm of water level increase and no impacts upstream of the Broughton Creek confluence. The flood level difference for the Shulhaven City Council projected 2100 sea level rise shows that sea level rise of 360 mm results in typically less than 200 mm of water level increase in the floodplain and again no impacts upstream of the Broughton Creek confluence. Comparison with the previous flood study shows that similar flows have been used for both studies except for the 1% AEP and the probable maximum flood event where the current study adopts lower flows after validation with historical events. Flood level results in the current study are typically lower than the previous flood study results due to differences in the model flow and due to the lower flows adopted in the current study for some events. The current study flood level results align well with recorded flood levels for historical events with a similar expected annual exceedance probability. It is widely accepted that climate change will lead to increases in global temperatures, which will lead to increases in the intensity of rainfall along with sea level rise. A number of climate change scenarios have been investigated in this study for both 2050 and 2090 for increased rainfall with current sea level as well as increased rainfall in combination with sea level rise. Tidal inundation was also looked at for existing and sea level rise scenarios. This image shows the water level difference for the 2100 climate change scenario with a 16.3% rainfall increase combined with expected 2100 sea level rise of 360 mm. The darker blue colours showing greater flood level increases. Increased rainfall due to climate change has the biggest impact on the Shoalhaven River upstream of Narrow Bridge due to the increased flows and the incised valley. While sea level rise predominantly impacts the lower Shoalhaven River downstream of Tarara in the Crookhaven River Crookhaven Creek floodplain. There is little to no additional increase in water levels due to sea level rise seen upstream of approximately Pigger Island or within the Broughton Creek floodplain. Flood hazard is determined through a relationship developed between the depth and velocity of flood waters using six categories based on the stability of children, adults, the elderly, vehicles and buildings in flood waters. In the 1% AEP event, the main watercourses have high hazard classified as H6 and almost the entire Broughton Creek and Lower Shoalhaven, Crookhaven River floodplain areas are classified as H5 due to the significant flood depths, meaning it is unsafe for vehicles, and people and buildings vulnerable to structural damage. Only the flood fringe areas are classed as the lower H1 to H3 hazard. The number of properties impacted by flooding has been calculated for external overground flooding of yards and overflow flooding of buildings. It can be seen from this table that there are a reasonable number of some 80 properties impacted with overflow flooding in a 20% AEP event, around 1,000 properties in a 1% AEP event and over 2,000 properties in the probable maximum flood. The draft Lower Shoalhaven River Flood Study and the summary report for the draft Lower Shoalhaven River Flood Study are now on public exhibition. The flood study includes a detailed description of the study methodology and outcomes, including an extensive set of flood maps. Council is asking the community as part of the public exhibition to provide feedback on the draft flood study and provide input to what mitigation options you would like Council to consider in the floodplain risk management study and plan. The final flood study report will be completed following collation and review of submissions received from public exhibition. The study will then move to the floodplain risk management study and plan preparation. In preparation for the floodplain risk management study stage, a draft list of mitigation options has been prepared, which includes flood modification options, such as levees and strategic landfilling, emergency management options such as road raising for evacuation and planning and property measures such as house raising, purchase or land swap.